Hello and welcome to our home meeting catch up. During the next nine weeks we're going to be studying in our home meetings whether in person or on Zoom depending on what conditions allow. We're going to be studying the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews is the most amazing book. It speaks about the differences between the old covenant and the new covenant and speaks about how much better that new covenant is than the old. And what we're going to be doing as meetings is we're going to come together having encouraged everyone to read maybe a couple of chapters of the book and just be bringing to the meeting the places that have just spoken to them. We're looking for this to be an exciting time where the revelation of who Jesus is is revealed more and more and more to each one of us. Now Hebrews was a book written nearly 2,000 years ago uh, and it was spoke, written we don't actually know who it was written by or actually to where it was written. But the people it was written to were Greek speaking Jews. These were people who were outside of Israel, but were Jewish people with a, a background and the culture of the local communities. And as the gospel had come, they had seen the truth of the gospel and come out of the old covenant into the new. But as time had gone on, persecution had come and they began to slip back into the old, probably for safety, on all sorts of reasons, but they had begun to lose the edge. And the writer of Hebrews begins by saying to them, you know, he says, in the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets on many occasions and in various ways. Now, however, he has spoken to us through his son, who he has made heir of everything that has been created through Jesus, God created the entire universe. And he is the one who shines with God's own glory. Those first two verses are just so amazing. They define to us who Jesus is. Jesus, God's son, is the one through whom he made everything. Jesus is and always has been and always will be the port the contact place of God to man to the physical realm God who is spirit his son Jesus is the part of God the manifestation of God that has that touch to the human world to the world physical world and it is through Jesus that God created all things and he has spoken through generation to generation, calling people back to him. He's spoken through angels. He's spoken through prophets. He's spoken through Moses. He's spoken through the law. He's spoken calling people back to him. But in this generation, in this covenant, he spoke through his son. And that's just so amazing. And they're looking and seeing where is this covenant better than the old covenant. And in verse 4 we read that when Jesus returned to heaven, he took his rightful place, far superior to the angels. For the name of Jesus is so much greater than the name of any created being on heaven or on earth. The theme of what we're going to be looking at over these next week, nine weeks is going to be greater, better, more of. And here we have in verse 4 that he took his rightful place far superior to the angels and the name of Jesus is greater than the name of any created thing. Isn't that just amazing? Isn't that powerful? He is above all created things, whether human or angelic. Jesus is greater than them all. He is better his name is superior verses uh, 7 8 9 10 11 let's just look around there how does he regard angels then he makes his angels as winds servants who are flames of fire what does he say about his son is entirely different he addresses him as god and says oh god your throne will last for all eternity and you will rule with the authority in your kingdom because of your righteousness. 
For you have loved what is right and hated what is evil. For this reason, I, your God, have set you above all by anointing you with the oil of joy. He has made him greater than all things. He has made him higher. His kingdom will last longer than any kingdom. It's a better kingdom. It's a better authority. It is so much better. And then reading on in verse 10 and 11. And God also says to him, O Lord, you created the heaven at the very beginning. Even the heavens were made by you. The earth and the heavens will come to an end, but you will outlive them. In due course of time, they will cease. They will be worn out and need to be replaced. But you will not have changed and you will never die. God, wait, Did God ever say to an angel, sit at my right hand until your enemies are crushed beneath your feet? Jesus carried a better anointing than any other thing that has gone before. And when we read in those verses, we're speaking of a time when the earth has finished its purposes and all things will pass away. But Jesus Christ will never pass away. And so with that introduction of chapter 1, the writer went on to this next part. How important is it that we take seriously what we've heard and do not drift away from the truth? The call to these believers who had left the old covenant was don't drift back to the old one. Stay with the new. It is so much better. That's really, really just so, so important. It's so easy for us to fall into tradition, to fall into perhaps things that we came out of because we lose sight that the new is so much better than the old. And we read verse 2. The messages God gave people through the angels were considered binding on those who received them. Any bit disobedience to the commands given would result in just punishment. And now we have received a greater revelation of a, the great salvation made possible through faith in Jesus. It is surely even more important to realise that to ignore such a truth will lead to a greater punishment. That's one of those really hard verses in scripture. Because we think once we've accepted Jesus all is fine. That verse is just to point us to that we have such a greater revelation we have such a greater salvation that you know what we have a greater responsibility our responsibility is to run the race we have become into a greater accountability these verses encourage us run the race run the race to the end and then scooting towards the end of the chapter we read again something that's most beautiful It's beginning to speak about how Jesus is the author of our salvation, the perfect sacrifice that will bring us back to God. We are now made holy in God's sight. Jesus has accomplished something so amazing. We who were separated from God because of Jesus, because of his life, his death, his resurrection, he has brought us back into relationship that we can be called children of God. We read that in verse 13, that here I am to go with the children God has given me. And one of the most beautiful parts of these few verses we're looking at today, Jesus shared in our humanity, having flesh and blood like us, so that through the death on the cross, he could utterly destroy the devil who holds the power over death. You know what? That's more powerful. He's got a better power. He's utterly destroyed the work of the devil. Now, all those who have spent their lives in bondage because of fear of death and what lay beyond are set free. We've got a better freedom. We've got so much better. These people, 
These are the people of faith, the true descendants of Abraham. It is these he raised to his glory, not the angels. This is just amazing. We have a better future than you could even imagine because of what Jesus has done. And verse 17, to accomplish this, Jesus had made had to be made like his brothers in every respect. He became our high priest, the one who offered the perfect sacrifice of himself to God, the merciful and faithful high priest who was obedient in his service to God. In this way, he made the act of atonement by which we are again made one with God because our sins are all forgiven. He's made us one with God. We are one. That oneness, that theme of oneness is just such a beautiful thing that is better than any other religion. Then verse 18 is this most beautiful thing. However, to be the one who could act on our behalf, he had to be subject to temptation just as we are and so now he was able to help us when we need help to overcome temptation because Jesus went through that what it is like to be a man living in the temptation and he overcame he is able to help us to overcome temptation he has given us all we need for life and godliness as we've quickly reviewed the first two chapters of Hebrews. I just encourage you as we come together for the next week, be ready to read through. We're going to be looking at chapter 3 verse 1 through to chapter 4 verse 13. Just be spotting in there the places where this new covenant is so much better than the old covenant. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye.